Thank you for coming. My name is Chris. I am the uh, marketing manager for Planetar. And today we're going to be talking about private versus public views, uh, security and access. And so what I hope to do today is help you understand um, what that means, uh, what options are available for you when you're making eye guides, and then why you would care. So, uh, <laughs> you know, what's the benefit, you know, to you in your everyday life? There are some cool tricks that you can do um, that relate to views uh, using eye guide user views. So um, that's going to be kind of part of the discussion. Right off the top, though, I just wanted to mention a couple things. So there's some cool stuff um, coming down the pipeline. And one of those things is uh, a conference called PMRE. I don't know if any of you have heard of it, but um, it's in November and it is a sort of conference trade show for real estate photographers in Las Vegas. It's very cool. If you haven't yet, please go check it out. Um, I don't uh, know the website off the top of my head, but I have a feeling it's PMRE. Con oh, it is. Yeah. PMREconference.com. Here, I'll show it on my screen. Okay. So yeah. Anyway, PMRE conference. So we're going to be there as a sponsor. Um, and we, uh, or I personally will be there. And that's, you know, that's like a big deal for me because I don't leave my basement very often. Um, it's nice down here. Like I'm not complaining or anything, but <laughs> you know, it's nice to get out and see people and talk. So if you're going to PMRE or um, I'll see you there. And if you're not, think about going because it's going to be fun. Uh, and we're giving away a camera there as well, which is pretty cool. So that's the first thing, PMRE. The second thing uh, out of three things that I want to show you, or I'll just mention it, is YouTube. So we have a YouTube channel. So all of these webinars go on YouTube. So if you miss one, uh, you know, and you're like, oh, I really wish I had seen that masterclass on whatever it was, just subscribe to the YouTube channel. We don't spam content. Whatever we put up there is hopefully quality content. <laughs> I, I make quality content. There you go. Um, so it's a, so if you subscribe and then you, you do the notifications thing, it'll just tell you, you'll get a, like an update when we put a new video on. So that's kind of cool. And then the last thing is Facebook. Um, Facebook is, uh, um, or we have a, a, a group on Facebook that um, if you haven't joined, you should. Hopefully it'll come up when I uh, click on here. There we go. I got 3D to a creative group. So if you haven't joined this yet, please do. Apparently it has 431 people following. So that's kind of cool. It's a public group. You can ask questions and um, it's a great opportunity to have discussions uh, or look at pictures of cats, which I thought was amazing. And that's kind of why I'm bringing it up. I have a soft spot for photos of animals. Who knew? Um, so anyway... <laughs> <laughs> let's let's get down to it. Like I said, I'll talk for about 15, 20 minutes and then uh, and then I'll you guys can ask whatever questions you want. And uh, feel free to just ask the questions and I'll, I'll get to them at the end if I don't have time during. Okay, cool. So let's let's load up an eye guide. Uh, and I'll, I'll sort of explain this. So after you've shot an eye guide, you know you're you you've got you've got your, your, your finished product. You've got your online virtual tour, your 3D tour. You've got your, your floor plans, your square footage totals, and you need to share that, right? So for most people, um, that's a very simple process uh, in that you take this email that you see on screen right here, the iGUIDE report, which is sent to you automatically upon the completion of the iGUIDE drafting. And you uh, either just forward that on to whoever needs it, or it can be sent to them automatically, actually. So there's that too. Um, but the, the main sort of thing that you do with this is you take this link that I'm sort of hovering over here. I hope you guys can see that. Um, or this link here. So there's the branded and the unbranded version. I won't go into detail about that, but you know, you're going to choose one or the other. And you're going to share that link with people. And that link is... You copy and you paste it wherever you want people to see it. It's pretty simple. Um, and for most people, like that's that's about it. That's about all they really do. Um, and that's all you really have to keep straight is sort of like which one to use. And um, well, I'll just say it just in case. Um, so the branded link it, uh, contains uh, branding materials. So that's logos, headshots, contact information. And that's the one that you would share, you know, on... Uh, 
social media or wherever you want people to know who created the eye guide. Um, that is to say who paid for the creation of the eye guide. <laughs> so usually it's a real estate agent. Uh, and then the unbranded eye guide doesn't have any branding in it. So you would use that for an MLS. If you're not in residential real estate, there's quite a few of you here now, um, then may, this might have no relevance to you whatsoever. This is a residential real estate uh, thing. Uh, but that's the difference between the two links. One has branding and the other does not. So that's the drop down banner plus the image on the tripod and, and, and a few other things. So really that eye guide is, is public and, um, you know, uh, there's a, a few things that sort of go along with that. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is, you know, okay, so you've got a public version and then obviously you guys know from the title of the webinar, there's like a private version, but it's sort of more complicated than that. So we're going to go into the details, but we're going to start here because everyone should hopefully know this. <laughs> so, uh, so let's go into a little more detail. So when you share one of these links, I'll even, I'll even load her up. There you go. So fun fact, um, this is a property that I shot and it was really fun because I got to wear a, uh, there's the people I was with, a hard hat and a high vis vest and it was dirty and I enjoyed it. And like I said, I don't get out very often. So it was a fun experience. Um, side note on my fun fact, <clears throat> uh, the um, iGUIDE camera, like if you're new to iGUIDE, um, really eats these giant spaces for breakfast. This was like, I don't know, I think it was 20,000, but I think that's for two floors. So there's the first floor and a second floor. Either way, it doesn't matter that the big giant mega ridiculous spaces, this camera just loves it. It does such a good job. It's so cool. And you can move so quickly and really focus on, you know, not tripping and falling to your death, which is a nice bonus <laughs> when you're you know, on site <laughs> trying to stay safe. Um, it's actually kind of funny because this guy over here, uh, his whole job on site was just to keep me from dying. Like he's just walking around and be like, don't go there, don't go there. Um, which was very entertaining. He was very nice. Anyway, um, this uh, eye guide that you've created is publicly accessible via the link, obviously. If I, so if you share the link with someone, they're going to find it. But it's more than that. So I don't think it'll come up, but we can, we can try it actually. Um, hopefully it does actually. Is it Grand Avenue? What was the address here? 50 by my, I think 50 Grand Avenue North. Okay. Yeah. So let's go search. Oh, it already filled it out for me. Okay. Well, whatever. So what I'm getting at is that, um, oh yeah, see, it's a, it's a big building. So there's going to be a lot there. Um, and this is also just like brand spanking new. I'll just put in eye guide. Maybe that'll start. Um, there you go. So we, we found it. Uh, so what happens is that when you create an eye guide tour, it is automatically public and indexed on Google. So that means that yeah, it takes a few days and it um, sometimes it's easier uh, for some properties than others. But essentially uh, what that means is that um, that's a good thing, mostly mostly, uh, because um, when a property is indexed by Google, that means that if anyone searches for that property name, you know, the iGUIDE will, will come up directly. And most of the time, there isn't a lot of content uh, for Google to sift through for, so for example, uh, 48 Eagle Street. There, there aren't really a lot of things that would come up if someone were to search that. So the iGUIDE has a very high probability of popping up very quickly. And the reason that's a benefit to you is that if you want someone to find that property um, online and find the iGUIDE, uh, the iGUIDE is indexed by Google. So it'll come up in the search results. So that means if someone's driving by the house and they see the for sale sign and they just Google the address, there's a pretty high probability that they're going to get an iGUIDE in the search results. So that's very cool. So that's the upside. So that's as, that's as public as you can get. <laughs> you know what I mean? People could search for it and they could find it. So the, the upsides, I think, are pretty obvious. That means more eyes on it, more traffic. Um, and, uh, you know, it competes favorably with other things like other listing portals and, um, you know, that, and that's good. So that means the content that you created is going to get seen by people and that will generate results for you uh, and, in theory, make your clients um, happy, which is nice. Um, oh, yeah, I see the question. Yeah, we'll get to, we're going to get to protected and, uh, and private as well. So that's... Um, that's, that'll be like the next thing. So uh, the cost with that 
uh, indexing of Google is that um, because it's automatic, that means that 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 listing is up uh, immediately. <laughs> it's searchable essentially very quickly. So let's suppose for a moment that you don't want people to see the eye guide. And so this is this is a really important takeaway if you're not familiar with this, because um, this can get into a lot of trouble. This can get you very angry phone calls, like with people yelling at you, which is not fun. Um, I've had many fun fact. So uh, let's suppose for a moment that you uh, create the eye guide, but the property is not listed right away. Maybe it's listed in two weeks. Okay, so you unknowingly just create the eye guide and uh, that's it, think you're done. And then for some reason, the homeowner goes and searches for their house online. I don't know why people do this, but they totally do it. Uh, and then they find it. And then your client, the real estate agent, calls you and says, "What? why is that eye guide live? The listing's not even up yet. You take it down immediately and they, they flip out, right? Um, so to avoid that, you have to ask your client when the property is going to be listed. And uh, you can't take for granted that it's as soon as possible. So <laughs> the funny thing is that, like, for me personally, when I used to shoot a lot of houses, it was like 99.9% .9 of the time that the, they wanted that eye guide up like yesterday. <laughs> you know, like there was no delay. It was irrelevant. But, you know, very rarely from time to time, it was the opposite. They didn't really have everything all kind of sorted out yet. And so they didn't want the marketing materials to be public because they hadn't officially, um, you know, um, signed off on everything yet or whatever. So, or they just didn't want people to know that the property is listed. There, there's lots of different reasons. So the way that you fix that or the way that you avoid that is you have to ask your client, hey, when's this property go live? And they, they tell you, and then you have to lock it until um, they're ready to show it. And so the way that you, so you have to tell them, hey, you tell me when it's ready to go live and I'll do it. And they say, okay. So the way that you do that, in case you don't know, is that you find your property um, on the iGUIDE portal. And oh, there you go. There's the square footage. That big one was 22, 23,000 square feet. Um, you click iGUIDE details and you scroll down and you're gonna see here under iGUIDE user views, there's a bunch of buttons and one of them says lock. So I'm not gonna click this because they're using it right now. But if I click lock, that means that um, that uh, property won't be visible. So if it's already been indexed by Google, when you do that, it'll still come up in the search result, but when someone clicks on it, nothing will happen. It'll just load up a blank eye guide and say, um, this view is locked. Actually, you know what? I'll even show you that. I can show you, why not? Let's, let's, let's do it properly. Okay, so I've, I've locked that view. There you go. So that's what they'll see. This eye guide view is locked. So if you lock it right away, it doesn't even get in. It takes, uh, takes a couple of days to do that. So no one will see anything. Um, so here, let me turn it back on so I don't forget. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, so basically, um, you choose when it goes live, essentially, by locking it and then unlocking it when you want. But the default is just full on public on Google, visible to everybody. So bear that in mind. Um, but there are other ways to do this. So um, sometimes there are some eye guides or tours where you, you it doesn't want to, you, ne you never want it to be public. It's never going to be public. Or maybe there are parts of an eye guide that you don't want to be public. So what you would do in those cases is you would obviously lock the eye guide by doing that thing I mentioned earlier where you click the lock button. And um, once it's locked, uh, you might think, well, okay, what now? <laughs> so if you look over here at this button that says create new views, um, you create a new view. And when you click it, it looks like this. So now I have kind of like two different versions of the same eye guide, you know? So they have the same everything, same panorama, same images, um, but they are independently configurable. So if I lock this one, I can keep this one unlocked. So you might think, well, okay, didn't that just put you in the same position you were in before? The answer is no. So that any view that you create beyond the default one is not indexed by Google. So this is also known as a private view, which is a fancy way of saying that it's still public. If I take this link and I share it you know, with somebody, they're still going to load up the iGUIDE and see it. And I can't control who has that link once it's out in the, on the internet. But you have to have that link. So it's not as though anyone can search for the property and find it. Um, so that means it's 
it's not exactly completely private, but it's it's more private. It's almost like invite only in a way, <laughs> you know. But you can't stop people from crashing the party. There we go. That was a pretty good metaphor. Somebody write that down. So, uh, private views are cool. You can do a lot of interesting stuff with them. So it's it's like one extra layer of security, and it can be used uh, very specifically uh, for where to go um, to create a view. Um, where you would um, edit um, the settings of the eye guide to maybe, you know, show something that, I don't know, you don't necessarily want everyone to see, if that makes any sense. Um, so I've used this example in, I don't know, probably a million times at this point. But when my wife and I sold our home, um, it was like uh, uh, right in the 2020, like right in the smack middle of the beginning of COVID. And it was it was a hot mess that whole process. <laughs> it was it was rough um, because the where where we were selling there was a lot of demand, and we couldn't it couldn't physically get people into the houses safely to do like to do viewings. So um, so that meant that the the virtual tour the eye guide was like you know an extremely valuable tool for people to see the property because you couldn't there just weren't enough people or there wasn't enough time during the day to get people in. Um, in a staggered, safe way with COVID protocols, right? So what I'm saying is that instead of an open house where everybody just shows up and it's a big carnival or zoo or whatever, they had to they had to get everybody all scheduled and then one person would go in and have a look and then they'd leave and then another person would go in. And they only had like 15 minutes <laughs> each. Um, and while they, while they were doing it, we were like driving around the block and we were watching it, you know, with the whole family in the car. It was pretty funny. Uh, so... Um, that meant that um, there wasn't a lot of time to see everything. So the eye guide was very useful. But the reason it relates to private views is that I made multiple versions of the eye guide using views um, that either had um, some panels on or didn't have some panels on. So I didn't have time to clean up certain things as, as happens when a house is listed. <laughs> so, you know, you got to get rid of all your junk, right? So I took all the, you have to declutter. So I took all this stuff and we, you know, tossed it all in the garage. And so the garage was a big, nasty mess. So I did, I took scans of the garage, but they were, you know, not particularly attractive or marketing worthy. So for image reasons, I left them off, for example, the version of the eye guide that was on the realtor or on the listing portals, but then I made a private view so that the agent our our listing agent could share that data with, you know, people from out of town. So, you know, they could see everything, right. They could, and it was more than just the na nasty garage. The basement was like super gross and haunted and like full of like giant spiders, the size of a cat or whatever. So, you know, people need to see that stuff, right. They, they, uh, um, they have questions. So um, in order to answer those questions, I created a different view that wasn't as pretty, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's uh, perfectly acceptable. Um, the uh, um, private views can be used for, um, showing the whole house though. It doesn't have to be just like a portion. So let's suppose we go back to that scenario I mentioned earlier where you have, you know, a, a property that's not listed yet. So you could lock it, you could make a private view. And then what you could do is you could share that private view with just very specific people, you know, um, you know, do like a pre-listing thing. Um, I don't know if that's popular or if it was, if it was ever popular, but sometimes they, uh, agents would, as a bit of a gimmick, do like a pre-listing party or whatever, or, you know, they, like before it's on the market, they kind of tease that it's going to be on the market. I don't know if that's still a thing. Anyway, um, you know, the eye guide can be, can be configured to be sort of private and then you can use it to share before you share it publicly, basically. So, um, just some details about private views or additional views in general. I'm um, just, you know, obviously isn't a, uh, webinar about views, but, um, we have a fancy video all about views. What do you do when you have an eye guide to share, but you don't want to share the whole thing? Just hide the parts of the eye guide you don't want people to see, right? But what if you want to show those hidden spaces to someone else without messing around with the tour for everyone? That's where views come in. Views are really cool. They let you take any eye guide and make different versions with different properties. Views allow you to um, hide or show entire floors. You can turn off specific scans. Um, you can, um, change the images from one view to another, you know, um, you can do all sorts of weird things. Any, basically anything you can edit on an eye guide, um, 
you can more or less change per view. Um, so it's a very powerful tool. Uh, there are some weird side effects of this though. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but um, the URL for private views is like weird. So in order to kind of hide the address, um, it's like a bunch of random letters and numbers. So you can't change that. That's a limitation. So that's that's sort of annoys people sometimes. But any other um, thing you can imagine uh, for the most part, you know, any of this stuff you can change. So you could do um, different versions, <laughs> different color schemes on the floor plans, maybe. I don't know. That <laughs> seems like a good idea now that I've said it. Um, okay, so anyway, while we're here, I'm gonna tell you about another version. So, so you've got fully public. That's, that's just full on. Anyone can search for the property on Google and anyone can view it. Um, that's what most people do, probably 99% of people. Then you've got private views, which is interesting, super flexible, cool, um, but still kind of insecure. And then you have the opposite side of the spectrum, protected views. And this was um, mentioned uh, by Joshua in the questions. He, he said, uh, that only works when a file is not protected view uh, for what I was saying earlier. And that's very true. I'm gonna say I answered that. There we go. Um, so I, I'm just gonna, we're gonna break it up. We're gonna be dynamic. I just got a question from John. I'm gonna read it out loud. If you lock an eye guide, are the floor plans still viewable as a PDF? The answer is no. So if you lock an eye guide, everything associated with that eye guide is completely and utterly locked down. The only exception is the title. So if someone clicks on it, they're still gonna see the address in the title. Um, I don't know what that tells them, except that there's a tour that exists, but no, not, yeah. So everything is locked down. None of the links will work if it's locked. Uh, and that's um, on purpose. I hope that answers your question. Uh, okay, where are we at? All right, okay, so now, now we're gonna, how are we doing for time? Oh, we're doing okay. Yeah, I got some time. Um, so now we're gonna talk about protected views. So protected views um, require that someone, uh, basically, I'll, I'll show you, you and they require that someone log in to see the, the eye guide. So this is this is pretty hardcore. Like you, you have to really want <laughs> you know, someone to, to restrict access to use this mode. But that being said, this is the absolute most secure thing you can really do um, other than uh, lock it and give someone like administrative access, but you wouldn't usually do that. But here, I'll, I'll show you how it works. So if I click um, the button for a protected mode, it gives me a uh, like a little drop down here, or sorry, a little a field that I can enter people's email addresses in. So what I can do is I can say, hey, this person with this email can see um, this view and that's it, only that person. So anyone else trying to go to the, the, the any of the URLs, well, they won't see anything, or the view rather, um, only the people that I specifically say can see it. Um, and they have to be logged into the iGUIDE portal with their that email to do it. You might think, okay, why, why would I care? <laughs> That's kind of intense. So there are times where um, you wanna be really, really sure that people can't see what you're doing. Uh, maybe there's really sensitive information um, and you need to lock it down. So I'll give you an example. So you go and you shoot an office building and that office building has sensitive intellectual property on their in their offices. I don't know. Um, something that they, the world can't see. Okay. So you could go into every single scan and wipe it, but maybe they want that. I don't know. If you put it in protected mode, that means that the facility administrator, facility manager, is someone, they have an interest in using that eye guide like frequently. Um, you know, they're, they're doing facility management stuff. They're looking at windows and they're checking square footages for furniture placement or doing whatever facility managers do. And um, they don't um, mind that they have to go through that extra step to log in. Uh, and so um, it's not, you know, that's not meant for a lot of people to use. It's for a smaller select group. Um, so then the protected view makes sense. So um, that means that uh, there is no chance that someone could share like a, <laughs> like a link and then get access to it and rip all that stuff out. And all the, all the sensitive details. So that's, that's just one example. Um, there's, there's, uh, um, there's something to be said for, um, security in any industry, you know, so that people don't see what you don't want them to see. I'm sure you guys can think of lots of different reasons. Um, protected mode is, as you might imagine, very frustrating if it's not 
what you want. If it's something where you, you want to lock it down, but you don't want to make people jump through hoops to log in because then they have to create an account and you have to add them to this list every time. So it's not ideal. There is a sort of middle ground that um, exists that we don't currently support, but if enough people ask for it, we would we would implement it. It would go up on the priority list. I'll tell you what it is. So if you want to go you know, on the feature suggestions area of the portal and uh, <laughs> and ask for it, uh, you'll know what it is. So there is, um, it's very common on the internet to have password protected pages where it's, it's, it's in the middle, right? It's not, it's not like uh, fully protected, but at the same time, it's not just public. Like anyone with the link could load it up. They need to know one additional password. So you can imagine you would load up the iGuide. It would ask you for a password. You put it in, you can see it. So you don't need to log in. You just need to enter a password. So we don't have that to clarify. Um, but if that's, that's, it's like an in-between, in-between private views and fully protected. And that's, that's a, it's a cool idea. It's been asked for in the past, but, um, you know, it always gets pushed back because it's not that important. Um, but anyway, if you guys think it's important, go to the forum and, uh, let us know. We do read it mostly. Um, so let's, uh, I'm going to sum up in the last few minutes, uh, the benefits of each of these things, and then I'll, I'll check your questions. So, the benefit of a uh, a regular old public view is that, and this is something, these are things you want to be telling your clients or using to help you grow your business. So um, a public view is indexed by Google, and that's a good thing most of the time. Uh, that's, uh, you know, means more eyes on the property. People can search and can find it. And, um, and that's kind of awesome. Um, and my wife and I, I can speak from experience, do that. We'll drive by a house and we'll see that it's for sale and we get a little nosy. <laughs> and we, you know, we go, <laughs> these are our phones and we Google the address and hey, you know, um, around here, there's a lot of eye guides. So it's pretty common for that eye guide to pop right up. Um, so, so that's a good thing. Um, again, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. So you have to be careful with that. Um, every eye guide um, is public by default. So if that's not what you want, you need to make sure to lock it down. Uh, Cause we don't know, honestly, um, we publish everything either way, unless you tell us not to, uh, because that is the default. Uh, then you've got private views. So private views are, are a, a very flexible way to create a different experience for different people. It's not like completely secure, but at the same time, it's not something that um, uh, is publicly findable. Um, you need to know the address in order to see it. And that's really neat because you can, you know, share different information with different people and you can answer, you can give people what they want, you know, basically. And then my example of my last house was, um, an easy one because I've had, I've literally had this exact experience where my wife and I are, you know, we're interested in a house, but the, the virtual tour isn't, it's like stuff is missing, right? They're only showing the pretty things. And that's such a common <laughs> thing to do in, in, in uh, real estate um, just to show the nice stuff. And then just like, Oh no, when they come to see the house, we'll convince them the rest of it's good too. I don't know what the mental uh, leaps you have to do. The logic there is, but it also has value in, every industry. So um, I'll use facility management again. It's pretty easy. Um, if you have a big old warehouse and someone is managing that warehouse and they want to send a contractor to a room with a furnace, maybe they don't want them to see the whole facility. Maybe they just want them to see, I don't know, the hallway going to that room and then the room with the furnace in it. And they want to say, go to that furnace. And they go, okay. Um, so there's times where you, you don't want people to have access to the whole you want them to have a part or you want them to have some sort of experience that is not the public one, I should say. So that's pretty cool. That's kind of a neat way of tailoring the, you know, the content that you're making to meet the needs of your client, which is adding value. And then lastly, you've got your protected views. So those are your, your very secure um, behind a login uh, uh, views that, um, or sorry, well, yeah, views that, you know, require someone to have specific permission uh, and for security conscious people that for some people that's like super important they can't you know have their their information their facility information out for anyone to see or just a house for example so i i, I was saying that this makes sense for a facility but it honestly you could put it in protected mode in residential real estate as well um, instead of just locking it or creating a private view there's nothing wrong with that it's perfectly acceptable okay so, uh, yeah, we're running out of time. Um, so I'm going to look at your questions uh, and I'm going to answer them. Um, 
thanks everybody for attending. Uh, have a, a great day. I hope you found this useful. Uh, please um, investigate PMRE. If you aren't familiar with it yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel and please join our Facebook group if you haven't already. Thank you so much. Have a great uh, rest of your day.